Hello again everybody. Doing some more work on my Ford Aho. I've got one more repair to make on the backhoe attachment before I attempt to attach it onto my Ford. On this bucket cylinder there's a couple scars on it. You see right there and here's a really bad one. And I don't want these scores to wreck this this seal more than it already has. I really don't know how bad this seal is. It might be already too far gone. But I figure just a little bit extra work before I put this uh, backhoe on might save me more time down the road. So I'm going to repair these these score marks. So I'm starting out first just with a file and I'm filing away the high points you can feel the file cut the bare steel and kind of skate off this uh, chrome. So once the file just starts gliding off everything, you've know, you know you've hit all the high points. Then I'm going to use my wire wheel to clear out some other areas. You see these areas here are older and they've filled up with rust and dirt and gunk over the years. They've kind of actually smoothed themselves out a little bit, but I'm going to clean, clean these out with the wire wheel so it's just bare metal. Okay, so I've just wire wheeled all these spots. Gently, you don't have to go after them too hard. You don't want to damage what good chrome you have. And the next thing I'm going to do is go after it with some sandpaper. Some, uh, this is some emery paper, uh, 600 grit, a little bit of WD-40 helps. This is just to get a, again, just to get a nice, clean, smooth surface. Because what we're eventually going to be doing is filling these voids with JB weld. I've got some other videos where I do some JB weld repairs. I have JB Weld on the on the crankshaft journals and the rod journal on my four and a half horsepower United, and I also have JB Weld in the cylinder of my two horsepower Stover to uh, fill up a gouge that's that's in the cylinder, and with the proper preparation, it works out pretty well. And this isn't going to be a perfect fix. The uh, the, the seals in here are already pretty well shot anyway, but as you can see I can turn this by hand, which really you shouldn't be able to do. But like I said, I just want to spend a little bit extra time and hopefully get a little bit a little bit of extra time out of this cylinder before I have to replace it. I'm going to hose all this down. And then finally, I go to acetone and a clean rag. Okay, so everything's clean. I got some GB weld here. I'm going to mix it up really well. But you also want to make sure if you're squeegeeing this down to remove the excess, don't push too hard, especially with a hard stick like this, and wipe out the material that actually should be in a divot. Okay, so this epoxy's been curing for a day or two, so this is ready to be to be finished. I'm just going to start out with a file, take off all the high points. Just like so. And don't focus in one spot too much, just you know, do one stroke and then angle the file a little bit, another stroke and just go at it nice and easily and evenly 
And don't be in a rush to take off too much at one time, because then you'll just make flat spots and you'll have to do it over again. So one more trick is instead of filing across, once you get close to being done, like I am here, file this way, one stroke, and rotate it over so you don't have a flat spot and then a flat spot. Just like so. And you can kind of feel when you're almost done because you'll feel the file skating over the metal rather than digging into the epoxy. And then yet another trick, after a while your file is going to get loaded up with epoxy dust. And every shop should have one of these. This is a file card. It's like a wire brush but it has very short bristles. And it does a great job of cleaning out files. You can use a regular wire brush and a pinch, but this works a lot better. And of course it works with metal filings as well. Then once you're done filing, it's already a pretty good surface, but I have some 600 grit emery paper here. Then I'll just give it a, a quick once over, just to smooth everything out. Run your fingers over it gently, feel for any high spots or irregularities, and this feels pretty good. I think that'll be just fine. Well, everybody, that's about all there is to it. I just finished up all the all the spots that I JB welded on this piston rod, and they all came out pretty well. I'm happy with it. There's a couple little spots here and there that I that I didn't quite get, but I got the big stuff. That that big looked like a chainsaw mark that was over here and a lot of other really big damaged spots. And those are the parts that I was really worried about damaging the seal on the in, inside the cylinder here. So I think this cylinder ought to last a little bit longer than than it originally would have. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. And make sure to stay tuned for the next episode. It'll be coming up soon enough. So uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching and come back for more.